Normally, if you take a cruise in a balcony cabin, you can expect your own little private place where you can see out, but nobody can see you. That isn't what happened on my last cruise, though, because I booked a balcony cabin that faced inside the cruise ship, directly at other cabins. This type of room is one of the most controversial, and it certainly took some getting used to. There were pros and a few cons that I hadn't thought about pre-cruise, and I saw and felt some interesting things from up here. There are plenty of reviews and videos that warn people not to stay in this type of cabin, but when I saw this video I knew that I had to try and book one for myself. A couple of months before this, I took a cruise on a similar ship owned by Royal Caribbean. Our promenade balcony had no clear view of the ocean, and we had a couple of issues with noise and soot and just generally with privacy. It looked as though the MSC cabin might be better in a few ways, or so I hoped. When I cruise, I usually book what is called a guaranteed cabin, which means that you save money by not picking your specific cabin location, but I knew exactly what cabin I wanted, so I did pay a little extra for this room. I wanted a cabin towards the back as it looked as though we would have a good ocean view as well as a view of the promenade, but I hope that we wouldn't feel too much engine movement from back here as that's often a problem with the aft cabins. I noticed from the deck plans that the cabin was a different shape to normal. Normally they're long and thin, but this was more square. I didn't mind that though, it looked spacious enough and the balcony shape, that looked very interesting. Before this cruise, I received a lot of emails from MSC asking me to pay for an upgrade, but I decided to stick with what I had chosen right at the back of deck 14. I could have bid for an upgrade for as little as £100, and it did make me wonder why were MSC so keen on me moving up and out of this room? When we embarked the ship, we walked right into this central street. MSC cruise ships are incredibly sparkly and shiny. They actually have a specific smell too, and you can buy the smell of MSC cruise ships in a diffuser form in the gift shop. The central street is on deck six, seven, and eight, meaning that we didn't have far to go to our cabin on deck 14. The cabins wouldn't be ready until about half past one, so we had a little bit of time before that, and we decided to head out so that we could see our cabin from below. The first thing I noticed was how we could see straight through and right out the end of the cruise ship. On Royal Caribbean Symphony of the Seas, there's an aqua theatre here, so we had no clear view of the ocean, and we really had no idea where we were most of the time. I hope that being able to see out would mean that we would feel more connected to where we actually were, given that we were going to be spending seven days sailing around the Mediterranean. From down here we could see into the cabins and the balconies looked huge. Having a cabin on deck 14 would turn out to be great because we were in between the inside areas and the buffets were up on decks 18 and 19. And yes, I did say buffets there. There are two buffets, it was fantastic. We spent a lot of time wandering up and down these stairs. It felt like a long walk down the corridor to our cabin, but our first impression was good. It definitely felt smaller than balcony cabins that I'm used to, but I loved the design and it was nice to have the bathroom tucked around the corner with this big wardrobe area. The bathroom, and in particular the bizarre door, would end up annoying me a lot during this cruise, but at this point I didn't know that. What I did notice though was that the toilet was very close to the bed, and the bathroom definitely is not soundproofed, so I would only share this cabin with someone that you do really like. I realised straight away that there was just one double bed in the room, it's hard to miss that. On cruises, the double beds are normally just two twin beds pushed together, and as I was cruising with my brother, we wanted two beds. I wrote a little note for our cabin steward, and later on we would end up meeting them in the corridor. We asked her to change the beds for us, which wasn't a problem. They were only about one inch apart, but still, better than nothing. The bed faced a TV where I would find some adult videos later in the cruise. The names were so funny, but at this point it just looked like a regular TV. We did watch the safety drill on the TV which was good and then we had to physically go to our safety muster station. I have heard in the past from people who have shared the double bed with their friend for the entire cruise because they didn't realise that the beds do convert but they do on every ship I've ever been on apart from the Disney magic because Disney just wanted to do that differently. Usually in balcony cabins you'll find a sofa that turns into a bed for the third guest or sometimes there'll be other beds that come down from the ceiling but we didn't have any of those in this room. This room slept two people maximum. The cabin did have a little desk area and a thing at the end of the bed where we could sit and put our shoes on. When our bed was split into two, I walked into this so many times in the middle of the night. I'm not sure why my sleepy brain couldn't take me around the outside, but every single time I would walk straight into this, I have some nasty bruises, but I'm not gonna show you those. It really was useful to have this though, so I wouldn't suggest that they take it away, but perhaps they could add some padding to it for the sake of my shins. I headed straight outside and was amazed to see that the space was almost double that of a normal balcony. It felt very long, but didn't feel too narrow. I wasn't too sure when booking if we would actually get direct sunshine onto our balcony, but looking up, I realized there was nothing above us, apart from 
of the balconies, of course, and the sky. And we did have clear ocean views to the left. It was beautiful. I sat down in one of the chairs and I realized it wasn't just the people opposite me who could see me on the balcony. It was everyone in the cabins to the side. Usually these partitions go right up to the edge, but it was very easy to see around these. Not a problem, of course. I was not expecting privacy on this balcony, but I was always aware of who else was around me. Most people on this cruise weren't speaking English though, so I didn't really hear any interesting conversations. Or if I did hear any interesting conversations, I had no idea what they were saying. I could have heard anything. Looking a little closer at the balcony area, I realized that there were three curtains. A privacy curtain, a blackout curtain, and another curtain on top. This privacy curtain Curtain was fantastic and I was surprised when I cruised on Royal Caribbean's version of this ship earlier in the year that they did not have any privacy curtains. Having it meant that we could be in the room without the fear of people seeing us and we didn't have to sit in the room in the dark. I loved it. We could see into other cabins if it was dark outside and they had their lights on and they had the curtains open, but really that was the only situation. I'm pretty sure these cabins have a layer of that reflective tint on them because I could see the reflection of my own cabin better than I could into their cabin. Looking down and out and across this area, I wondered if this would be busy. Would the noise from people partying keep me awake? Would people be screaming as they slid down this 11 deck slide? I did brave the slide by the way and I definitely did not need to scream because it was very slow. I will be bringing you the video from inside that slide in my next video, so please just check below that you are subscribed so that you don't miss it. We're trying to get to 300,000 subscribers, which is amazing. It wasn't long after this that our luggage arrived and we unpacked. We had lots of space for the two of us and we didn't even need to use every drawer. I put my suitcase in the bottom of the wardrobe along with the hanging space and I would just put my dirty clothes into here as I went. There was even a nice space for shoes, which normally I just end up throwing them in the bottom of the the wardrobe. When I was cruising on board Symphony of the Seas, we actually sailed away without me noticing because there was an aqua theatre in the way and I just couldn't see where we were and I didn't feel a thing. This was totally different on board MSC's World Europa because we did have a view of the ocean and the ports. Of course, that did mean no aqua theatre, which I absolutely loved on board Symphony of the Seas, but hey, it is swings and roundabouts. Swings and roundabouts is your Britishism of the week, and it doesn't mean roundabouts like those that you'll find on the road for cars. It means in a children's play area, those kind of roundabouts. It's all swings and roundabouts just means it's all positives and negatives. I don't know which is which in this saying, but it basically means at the end of the day, everything sort of levels out. The first sign they had that we were sailing was that the cabin would vibrate and it would shake quite a lot when they turned the engines on. I hope that this wouldn't wake us up for the rest of the cruise. During this first sail away, there were a few people gathered at the bottom at the back, but there wasn't really a party or anything like that happening. On MSC cruises, guests get on every day, so that means that the events are more spread out throughout the cruise. There isn't one big first welcome on board party, there's no goodbye, it's just an infinite loop of cruises. You could stay on forever if you wanted. One event that did happen every day though was the light show on the sky trees just outside our cabin. We really didn't know what to expect but I made sure that I was there at the right time so that we could watch these trees do their thing, whatever that was. It was just a short show, it was one song but the shapes lit up in different colours and it was very impressive. The scale of everything on this cruise ship was hard to take in, it felt like being on a spaceship to be honest. We actually missed our first port in Marseille due to bad weather, but we really didn't feel much rocking and rolling. The ship definitely did vibrate and judder at the back, but I would personally prefer that over the sort of lurching side to side that you can get on some ships in bad weather. I've never known anybody to get sick from being juddered around too much, but the juddering did give me really weird dreams, such weird dreams. The blackout curtains did a great job, but for some reason there were these two lights right by my bed. They looked like a face to me and they were the touch buttons for the lamps. Why they needed to light up and light up all the time, I have no idea. As the cruise went on, I did end up sticking a piece of paper over them with a plaster. To start with, I kept taking it down every day. I don't know why, maybe I was embarrassed by my inability to cope with the lights, but towards the end of the cruise, I would just leave it. And I, I guess my cabin steward just saw it. She was probably used to it, to be honest. The bed themselves were very comfortable. I loved the pillows. There was a USB socket and there was this little bit just below where you could put your pajamas if you have them. The ship was launched in 2021 and definitely felt new. The condition was perfect. Nothing was broken. There were no stains on the carpet. There were no rips. There was nothing like that. It was perfect. Over by the desk area there were more plug sockets and there was one of these drawers that I just call my bits and bobs drawer. This is for putting all of the random things in that you need on a cruise. Underneath there was a table and a seat that was cleverly stacked 
stacked inside each other. And in one of these drawers, there was a massive safe, a top-down safe, which is a great idea. There was also a fridge down here too, which is a mini bar. I did have a drinks package on this cruise, but that doesn't work for these drinks, so I didn't have any. Here are the prices if you're interested. I normally don't go near these. I headed into the bathroom for a look around next, and usually cruise ship bathrooms are pretty standard. They're normally a square, there's a sink, there's a toilet, there's a shower, and if you're very lucky and if you've paid for a suite, you might get a bath, but that is not common. The bathroom did seem small, but everything was well organized. I'm not too sure how this toilet space would be for people who are larger than me because it did feel a bit tight, but overall it was a pretty nice bathroom, apart from the door. The biggest problem I had with this bathroom was the door. It was a sliding door and I've never seen one like it on a cruise ship before. That rhymed, I think. From the outside, there wasn't really any way to open it, apart from if you could grab onto this little screw part in the middle, which I don't think that you're meant to do. I usually just pulled it from the far end, but I don't think that's right either. Inside, there was a little metal bit to pull, but the door was heavy, and I think by the end of the cruise, my fingers ended up much stronger than they were at the start. If you didn't have full strength in your hands, though, I think this might be a problem. At first, I thought, well, they need it like this because it goes out into the wardrobe area. There's no space for a door. But I realize now you could just open it towards the bed and that would be totally fine. So it is a bit odd, not the end of the world by a long way. And I never got stuck in the bathroom, so that's good. MSC, one of the few cruise lines that still clean the rooms twice per day. They change things like the towels if you want them to. And we got to know our cabin steward really well to the point where she would check if we were feeling seasick or if we were feeling unwell when we were on Do Not Disturb. She always checked afterwards, of course. She didn't break the rules of do not disturb to disturb us and ask us why we didn't want to be disturbed. The cabin stewards all wear really traditional maid outfits too, which I'm not used to. It felt like they were dressed up as maids, if you know what I mean. There was more storage by the desk and a TV that had access to some videos that you may not expect on a cruise. I love using the cabin TV for checking what's going on around the ship. I might watch a TV show, but this one also had an adult only section where you could pay for certain movies. The titles of these ones certainly did make me laugh and uh, I'll let you read those. A little later in the cruise there was a sail away party as we left Valletta in Malta. This was the busiest I'd seen the street and our balcony was the best place to watch it. We had an incredible view and the ship did a full 180 before we sailed away. It was so fun to listen to the music and to watch everybody dancing. Even the MSC mascots were down here. I think for me this is what cruising is all about. It's friends and couples and families just relaxing and having a good time. The bar opposite and below us was a smoke bar and people were mostly there wrapped up in their coats having a smoke. It wasn't very lively and it certainly didn't keep us awake. They didn't have live music in the street but they did have a DJ that played most days and on one day they had a silent disco. The silent disco was ironically probably the loudest we ever heard this area. Everyone puts on headphones with different songs playing and the colours on the headphones show what station you're tuned into, what you're listening to. Everybody will be singing along out loud to the songs and we could hear that in our cabin. The songs were mostly in Spanish or Italian, sometimes English, but they were things that I didn't really know, but I still recognized them. It was kind of cool. The silent disco went on until around 1am, but this was the only night of the cruise that we heard a lot of noise late at night. The rest of the time, this area was really quiet. There were no shows scheduled in here, and this bit is mostly just shops and specialty restaurants, and the shops always closed really early. It wasn't warm during our cruise, and that may be why I felt as though this area wasn't really used much beyond sailaways. Even even though it wasn't too warm, I'm happy to say that our air conditioning worked well and there were buttons for makeup room and do not disturb which showed outside the door. The lights outside would also show if someone was in the cabin or not which is all very high tech and so much better than the paper versions that you get in most hotels and still on a lot of cruise ships. The cabin that I'd booked was technically called an ocean and boardwalk view balcony cabin because we had a view of both. Those that were further in were just called boardwalk view and they were slightly cheaper. We never had any problems with soot in this cabin, even though we were behind the funnels. And you might think that's a given, but we did have some sooty issues on board the Royal Caribbean ship. And that is of course sooty like dirty, not sooty like sooty and sweep. All of the cabins on board have the same design, but the layout can be different. I did get a chance to see into some of the regular balcony cabins and they were much more the long, thin, standard shape. Sometimes the beds will be closer to the balcony, sometimes the sofa will be there, but really that is the only change. Given the price I paid for this cruise of £1,034.55, which is roughly $1,200, 
per person, including an alcoholic drinks package and gratuities for seven days. I was very happy with this choice of cabin. That price is based on two sharing and that's per person. I'm perfectly happy in inside cabins too, so I treat any outside space as a bonus. On most cruise ships, around a third of cabins don't have any outside space, they don't have a window, they are what are called inside cabins. And to find out what it's like to stay in one of those cabins and why I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for everybody, check out this video next.